critic. Oh, Miss Fiona, this is a bucket list moment for me. I'm so excited to speak to you. She's like, I'm glad I could oblige. <laughs> Cara, you're the best dressed interviewer we've had all day. So I know you've been seeing t-shirts all day, haven't you? It's very nice to see a proper dressed person. Beautiful. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, I had to come correct. I was just talking to you. I had to come correct. So um, I want to know first, of, let me show you this though, so that you can get your entire giggle on. This is how much of a Star Wars fan I am. Wow. A coach bag with Star Wars on it. Wow. Yeah. So let's just start there, shall we? (laughs) But having said that, what what was the first time you saw a Star Wars movie and which one was it and how did it make you feel? I mean, you probably think I was born in the 19th century, but I saw the first one and I saw it in America. I was an undergraduate and I went to uh, Chicago with some friends. My first time away, first time in America, first time eating at McDonald's. And we saw Star Wars on an outdoor screen. It, I, I, my, it blew my mind, as you can imagine. I never got over it. So it was fabulous. I love that. So now you're in this franchise. Speaking of franchises, you're like the franchise queen. You've been part of the Harry Potter franchise. You've been in the Avenger franchise. And now you're up in the Star Wars franchise. Is this a purposeful move on your part? Or is this just how the trajectory of your career and life went? I just turn things into franchises every time I'm in no, that I wish it were like that. It's a great pleasure to be part of franchise, and I, I, I mean, I mean, this is a particularly interesting one because you know Star Wars um, is so well known and has such a huge following that you feel such a responsibility just joining this particular uh, congregation of actors. Um, but I think this year is just brilliant. It's beautifully cast, great performances, committed performances. And so it's a bit like all the work I've ever done and that it's like doing something like Chekhov or Shakespeare, but in a futuristic, brilliantly designed um, world. So it's got all the, the interest of excavating human nature, excavating human relationships, and yet it's done in this heightened, heightened world that we're in. I have never heard someone compare Star Wars to the classics, but now that you say that, you're absolutely freaking right. Even down to the pentameter of the way the dialogue is spoken, it's very much that. Wow, I'm stealing that, Miss Fiona, and the next time I do a Star Wars interview, I'm gonna come like I was just oh so deep. I'm really like, no, I got that. I got that from Fiona Shaw. She gave that to me. I can't even take credit for it. I think when the values are very high, like rebellion or worry language does begin to get more formal because people have to say big things and they have to say them do you think that marva's actions have real consequences to the um for for her the galaxy or both i think marva is somebody who never thought that her actions would have any consequence ever but if you press somebody hard enough um you know, something changes. I mean, did Rosa Parks know that by not sitting in the back of the bus, she was going to affect not just that bus, but the whole world. She changed the world in a moment. So I think Marva, I'm not sure she's as great as third part, but she certainly makes a decision that um, allows something much bigger than herself to occur. I knew you was a deep dog. I'm so glad we're doing this. Let's, let's, let's get into it some more. Um, There's a quote that someone says, and and I think it might be the first episode. They say, you might want to study the ladder before you start climbing. How would you make that applicable to Marv? None of us really know where we're going. I mean, what what old people have? I mean, Marv is very old. She's much older than me. I just want you to know that. Really old when we meet her. And Listen, you know Black don't crack, so you don't really know how old I am. I might be 110. You'll never know. You don't look it. You look very, very young. But Marva is 80 in this or plus. So what she has got, she knows a lot of ladders. I mean, she's certainly studied both in fear. I mean, fear is a horrible teacher, but it has t- it teaches a lot of people how to be afraid. And then finally, it may teach them how to be not afraid. Because so I think Marva is the one person in the whole series who understands maybe the consequence of action, but uh, also knows when it's right that actually, you know, as she says, you know, that's the sign of a reckoning, is that a reckoning will come and a reckoning is much bigger than any of us. And we all live in a time now when there are huge reckonings and the reckonings are good things, but they come with great pain. And I think, you know, she would be as aware of that as anyone with that much experience of life. 
You know, I loved when she said that's that's I love that line about the reckoning. I love that so much. I was like, okay, Marva, okay, snaps and claps for you. Um, and just to close it out, Miss Fiona, you know, the Queen Mother has just passed. And I just wanted to get your feelings about that, about her passing and you know how we feel what's gonna happen with the monarchy moving forward. Well, I mean, it's certainly had a huge effect in Britain as that people are queuing for hours and hours this year. I do think she's the, she's the same age as my mother. My mother's 96. Oh. Uh, so my mother has outlived her now, but they're born the same month. But, oh. to, you know, it, it is extraordinary how people are shocked by the death of a 96-year-old because, I mean, she, she's been around a long time. But she also, maybe her passing is allows for change and i think change is always good i hope that they you know that something modernizes england can sometimes get a bit caught in the past so maybe now this is a chance to aerate well thank you that's my time and i just want to say thank you so very much i enjoyed talking to you it was a good time we had to kiki and chit chat and all of that i dressed up for you congratulations on the show congratulations on marva and i'm so looking forward to the next time we get to talk Carla, thank you for dressing, and I hope you go out and have a lovely time dressed like that. You look fabulous. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Carla.